Hi everyone, it's Nick. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Okay, in today's video, we are going to be talking about rich people decor that needs to go. Because although we're not begrudging people necessarily for the money that they have, that's not what we're here for. But what we are here to say is that money doesn't always buy you style. And some people that have a lot of money, their style isn't great. And so they follow trends too, by the way, which is why I thought in this video, I would highlight the luxury, oftentimes really, really expensive, items that we see over and over and over and over again in rich people's houses and they bug me and that's what I want to talk about. So this might not apply to you. Maybe it does, in which case good for you. But you know, sometimes it's fun just to make fun of rich people and talk about the ugly things they put in their home. Maybe not ugly, but sometimes overplayed because I'm sick of seeing these items. So that's what we're going to talk about in today's video. Let's go. Okay, first up on my list is going to be the Hermes throw, the Hermes blanket. Hermes has a lot of, they, they sell a lot of really funny things. I will also say, by the way, that I'm not really a like luxury fashion person, as you can see by my Lululemon sweater that probably has dog hair on it. Just not my thing, you know, just not really my thing. I would rather be comfortable and buy clothes that last, not clothes that have a label on them, or just because I like to spend, you know, $3,000 on a sweater or something. It's just not really my thing. I don't really do that. So I, I will start with that. I know a lot of people love it, in which case good for you. That is just, you know, your thing and you might be really into the luxury goods in general. Not really me. So I don't own anything from Hermes and I probably never will. The throw though, this is the thing. A lot of their home decor, that's really where it starts to bug me because the throw that they have is everywhere. I have seen this throw all over the place. I realized that it hit me how many times I've seen it when I was watching the Harry and Meghan Netflix documentary and they had the H in the background, which maybe it's cute because she calls him H. I don't know. It depends on how you feel about that. Anyway, the H blanket. It's like, how much is this blanket? This is like a $2,000 blanket or something. $1,650 is what it is. It's made of like cashmere and wool or something, which, you know, beautiful materials. Obviously, they're not going to cheap out of the materials. That's fine. If you're spending $1,650 though, I don't expect them to cheap out of the materials. This is just super overplayed. I have seen this 10,000 times. And $1,650, by the way, is very expensive for a very high quality throw. Like again, I'm not going to tell you to go buy a throw from Ikea for like 60 bucks and say they're the same thing. I'm not going to that. But I am going to say if you go to some place like the Citizenry, like what am I looking at this one here? I mean, this one's beautiful. This one's $295. Not a cheap throw. Not cheap. And they've got tons of throws over at the Citizenry and many other stores. I'm going to throw some favorites in the description. But the Citizenry one here, $295. Yes, it's made of 100% baby alpaca. Okay. This is not a cheap throw either, but it's beautiful and not everybody has it and it's 300 bucks. So maybe move away from the Hermes and just like get a really beautiful throw. Again, go to Ikea if you feel like it and you like a bargain because even rich people like a bargain sometimes but even if you are going to invest in really high quality stuff there's so many other brands out there that are doing amazing things you don't have to get the same h throw we have seen a hundred times okay next up on my list is going to be the cloud sofa so i have made fun of the cloud sofa i feel like i was against i didn't like an unpopular design opinions because i feel like a year and a half two years ago everybody wanted this couch this sofa everybody wanted the cloud sofa it's from rh it's very expensive i remember when that video went live a lot of people people were shocked because I said this is a 10, I think I said this 10, $20,000 sofa and people were like blown away. If you haven't been to an RH and actually priced out the cloud sofa, they were surprised that it was that expensive. And I was like, oh, people don't know. This is a very expensive sofa. The cloud sofa is everywhere. Rich people love it because it is the modern, kind of clean line, sort of simple, basic sofa du jour and has been for a while now. And it's incredibly sloppy when you don't fluff it every day. Who has time for that maintenance? It's very expensive. Everybody has done it already. And yes, it is a dream to sleep on, but I also like to sit on my sofa rather than just sleep on it. Called me old fashioned, but I just don't really love this sofa. I, and I will also add, in addition to the fact that it is extremely expensive, it has been duped by everybody. Every company, Wayfair has one, Sundays has one, like the movie night sofa I think is basically the same thing. Don't tell them I said that, but that's true. It's basically the same as the cloud sofa. You go into these shops and they're like, oh, this is our beautiful modern sofa. And I'm like, hmm, looks suspiciously like the cloud sofa. I have seen this thing done a hundred times. Go search here on YouTube, search for cloud sofa dupes. And there's about 10 of them easily that I can probably, that you can find in like five minutes of research. This sofa has been duped 
duped to death. It's not worth the money. It's definitely not worth what these very expensive rich people and celebrities and stuff are paying for this incredibly uh, expensive sofa. A lot of people have been saying RH's quality has been slipping. I'm not necessarily going to say that, but I would say that this sofa is not worth it. I feel confident saying that. That is very true. This sofa is not worth it for me, especially because it's a nice sofa, but not worth $15,000 for a whole set. Okay, next up on my list is going to be Double Kitchen Islands. So <laughs> if you subscribe to my channel, if so, welcome. If not, what are you doing? But if you have subscribed to my channel for a while, you may know that you may have actually subscribed because you saw a video of mine called Interior Design Trends That Need To Go that I did in January, 2021. That video went crazy. It was like a weird thing. And I think I had like 100,000 subscribers or something in a month because of that video. And I mentioned that I didn't like Double Kitchen Islands and I, was really like on my own on that one. I didn't feel like it was really talked about a lot about how much people don't like them, but we, I united a community of people that didn't like Double Kitchen Islands uh, that I didn't even realize was there. So um, yes, it looks like a science class. Yes, it looks excessive. Yes, it's ostentatious to the point of absolute obnoxious. I don't like a Double Kitchen Island. I don't think it's super functional. I think you need an island or a peninsula that is right sized for the kitchen that you have. It's too over the top. It's overkill. You don't need that much counter space. Well, you might need a lot of counter space, but there's better, more functional configurations to do with your kitchen than a double kitchen island. I don't like it. I didn't like it two years ago. I still don't like it now. And rich people insist on putting an I've now seen triple islands. It's too much. It's too much. It's too much. It needs to just, just have one. Just have one. Be made good with one and make it a beautiful island. Yes, put in a lot. Do a 10 foot island if you've got the space for it. If your place is gorgeous and massive and awesome, you do that. I'm not begrudging you that. I just think the double kitchen island is obnoxious and needs to go. So that is rich people decor. Not really, but rich people decor that definitely needs to go. Okay. And then next rich people thing that needs to go is going to be marble everywhere. So I love marble. I do. In fact, Someone left a comment on one of my recent videos being like, we get it, you like marble. Can you shut up about marble? I hear you. And no, I will not shut up about marble because I like it and I'm going to share it. And not everybody watches all my videos, right? So like, it's, it might not be new to you, me talking about marble, but it's new to somebody. Anyway, one thing I don't like about marble though is that the obsession with it has caused people to put excessive amounts of marble in their home. I'm really seeing this in the bathroom. You arguably are seeing it a lot in the kitchen as well, but where you just see too much marble, and to be honest with you, it kind of feels a bit lazy in its design because a lot of really expensive designers, what you'll do is to, if they have the budget for it and there's no limits, they'll just go, how many places can I put marble? And they'll put marble on the ceiling and the walls and the countertops and they'll put it on the flooring and they'll put it in the shower and they'll do a niche in marble. It just feels a bit like the marble coffin. It's a lot of marble and it's just, uh, yeah, it's really excessive and a bit mob boss and it just doesn't feel classy. It just feels a little bit like there's too much of a good thing and marble is wonderful but I love seeing marble paired with more humble materials you know can be just a simple porcelain tile can be paired with wood which of course is beautiful and timeless and amazing right there's concrete gorgeous like there's things you can pair with marble that don't scream how look how rich I am like marble does and so I think rich people, even though you have the budget, I think you can do more interesting things. I believe in you that you can do more interesting things than wall-to-wall -wall marble. And that's what I'm hoping for. Okay, next up, we have the Mario Bellini sofa. I've made fun of a few of these at different times throughout my career here on the YouTubes. And the Mario Bellini is another one that I had never bought the hype. I never bought the hype on that sofa. I think it's interesting. And I think as we've seen this new wave towards postmodern, which is what a lot of people are looking for, they're looking for something very different than modern, which has been very popular for many years and of course Scandinavian which has been very popular and they're looking for something a little bit more interesting feels very designer feels very special feels feels very like I didn't buy this at an Ashley furniture you know and I think that's what people have been trying for especially rich people because they heaven forbid they want to look like regular people. So they want something that's really interesting and cool and weird. So they end up all looking the same because they buy the same Mario Bellini sofa. So that is sort of my beef with it is that it's just been done so many times. Actually, that's not my beef with it. I don't really care that it's been done a whole bunch of times. I just think it's weird and bubbly and not practical and uh, looks like a bunch of hot dog buns put together. And that is for me why I don't really care for it. It doesn't look particularly comfortable. It's the opposite of the cloud sofa, which at least the cloud sofa is kind of comfortable to take a nap on. This, it's just weird and quirky, 
but not in a really fun way. It's also what I think is important to understand too, is it's not, it's really locking you, I think, into a particular sort of style for the rest of your space sometimes. This isn't something that you can just effortlessly drop into your living room and uh, call it a day. I think it sort of makes such a statement in your home that you're really building out the rest of your style to sort of reflect what the Mario Bellini is trying to do. And, and I get that that's fine if you're hiring very, very expensive designers like rich people, but when you're all hiring the same designers and you're all copying each other's style, everything just kind of ends up looking the same, you know? Okay, and keeping in the postmodern trend of the Mario Bellini, I cannot also forget about the Ultra Fragola mirror. The, what did Architectural Digest they called it? The ultimate selfie mirror? Oh, the times that we live in. This is the Lena Dunham mirror. This is the, what's her name? The Bella Hadid, which I don't even know who Bella Hadid is. I just read that in an article. Bella Hadid could walk in this apartment right now and I would know who the hell she is. So Bella Hadid apparently has this. Is she like married to a football player? That feels like something a Bella Hadid would be doing, would be married to a football player. But anyway, celebrities, they love the Ultra Fagola mirror and it's because it's Italian. Is it Italian? Anyway, they love it because it's quirky, weird, postmodern, squiggly, all the things that we talked about with the Bellini sofa. It is new. It's, well, it's not even new anymore because it, it feels like I've seen this 10,000 times in people's homes. But at one point it was new. It was weird. It was quirky. It was whimsical, I guess you could say. And I think that's what a lot of people were going for. They were like rejecting the like basic Scandi vibes that we were seeing in the early 2000, late 2019, 2020 sort of thing. And they wanted to do something really special and weird and interesting. And so they brought out this mirror and it's very expensive. I mean, it's kind of like the cloud sofa. There's 40 billion and dupes out there for this one. You can literally buy some on Etsy. But I would say the originals, like if you're gonna go for the postmodern classics, can run you tens of thousands of dollars on first dibs, which feels very expensive for a mirror that has already overstayed its welcome. But I guess if you're that rich, then you maybe you don't care. And maybe that's something that really bothers me a lot with a lot of these styles is that they feel very current and in the moment right now, but already because they're made for Instagram, because it's the ultimate selfie mirror, or they're made for TikTok now, that they feel almost like they're out as soon as they're in. And that just doesn't feel very particularly fun and timeless is to me and feels quite honestly wasted and there's already numerous examples of rich people doing really incredibly wasteful things. I'd rather that more ugly mirrors doesn't contribute to that. It's, I shouldn't say it's ugly. I mean, it's not my taste. How I, I'll say that. It's not my taste. So rather than having a $15,000 mirror in your living room, rather than you used to take selfies with, maybe you could uh, do better things with that money and buy uh, decor that's actually beautiful and timeless and unique and not just the same mirror that we have seen a thousand times on Dwell. Just in my opinion. Okay, that's it for me for today, guys. I got two more that I'm gonna be putting on the Patreon exclusive. So if you want, you can click on the link in the description. That is my Patreon where I do sometimes these list videos, but then I do an extra few to toss in for the old Patreon people because they're fabulous. So if you'd like to head over there, you can click on the link in the description. Otherwise, I will see you all in the next video. Thanks a lot. Talk to you later. Bye.